When thinking about all of the key signatures that we have available, sometimes it gets really easy to be bogged down by how many there are. How do we memorize all 15 major keys? And then when we think about all of the minor keys, there's another 15 keys to think about. So there's 30 keys in all, right? That's a lot of keys to memorize. 30 key signatures, 15 major, 15 minor. 30 keys is a lot to keep track of easily and quickly getting to all of them. Uh, so what if I told you you really only need seven? You only need seven major keys to quickly and easily understand all major and minor key signatures. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How do we quickly and easily get to all of our major and minor keys with really only knowing seven? So we're going to show you all of the tips and tricks to show you everything you need to know to understand all of the relationships between all of your major and minor keys to make this really easy. Uh, before we dive in, I want to give you my free gift. This is my music theory survival guide. Just go to joshring.com slash free and you can download this great PDF. It has a circle of fifths. It has a whole lot more too to help you get started with your music theory journey. So let's dive in. All right, so let's start with the seven keys that we need to know. And so with a major, I'm going to call this the rule of seven. We're going to see the number seven pop up quite a bit when talking about these major keys. Uh, so first, let's get started with the relationship between C major and C sharp major or C flat major. So you might be really comfortable with C major being no sharps or flats. So all of the white notes on the piano, for instance. So when getting to C sharp major, that has all seven sharps. Or getting to C flat, that's all seven flats. And, so, and when we look at it like this, we can see everything has a sharp now, so everything's been raised for C sharp major. Or everything's been lowered, everything now has a flat for C flat major, right? It makes it really easy to see we add seven sharps or we add seven flats respectively to C major, the key that we're most comfortable with. And this is true for every key, right? So every key has an opposite. So D major is the opposite of D flat major, right? When we think about there's two sharps in D, then there's five flats in D flat. Sorry. So the two plus the five get us to the seven. There's our rule of seven. And when we see it stacked up like this, we can see D major that we might be really comfortable with as being F sharp and C sharp. So when we go to D flat, everything has a flat but the F and the C, right? So you can see this mirror opposite of the F and C being the main notes to think about when we have D or D flat major. And as we go along the circle of fifths, we can keep seeing the opposites that we have, right? So A major with three sharps versus A flat with four flats, right? So again, that three plus that four adding up to seven. And again, when we see that, we can see, oh, the A major has the C, F, and G as a sharp, but A flat major has everything flat but the C, F, and G, right? So those three main notes being the main notes to think about. And the same thing applies to all of the keys, right? So E versus E flat. Those three notes that were flat in E flat major are now the th only three notes that are not sharps in E major, right? So you can have this opposite effect as we go around. Uh, same thing, we get more complicated with B major, right? So B flat major, we might be more comfortable with as being just B flat and E flat. So everything is sharp except for those two notes when you get to B major. And this is especially helpful when we get to things like F sharp major, right? We might not play in F sharp major as much as we do in F major. So just thinking about the, oh, F major has the B flat. So F sharp is everything sharp except the B. Same thing, we might be super comfortable with G major and just think, okay, there's, there's just that one F sharp. But when we get to G flat major, right? Everything is now flat except the F. So I think it's super helpful when we get to the bottom of the circle of fifths like that, where we have just a whole lot of sharps and flats at our disposal. Uh, so that's the other thing we can do as we're adding up the sharps and flats, all of the keys will add up to seven. So seeing it like this way, here I have the order of flats uh, as going left to right, but again, the sharps is just going right to left, going the opposite direction. So whatever is more comfortable for you, I like the order of flats because it spells out the word bead, and then I have GCF. So I learned BGCF almost 20 years ago, and it just kind of stuck with me. Uh, and ever since then, I really like the order of flats more. And so I can think, okay, B flat, two flats versus now the, there's five left over, right? So the two flats plus the five sharps again adds up to seven. And it can keep going down the line. Now the three flats plus the four sharps, there's my three plus four gets me seven. Or four flats plus three sharps, there's your seven again. And it keeps on going down the line. You just have to remember which one is which. And some tricks to help you, right? The, you're always gonna add one more flat than the key you're in. So B flat, you're gonna add a flat. There's E flat as well. Same thing, when you're in E flat, we're adding then the A flat. And if you're more comfortable with sharps, you might think the last sharp you add, you go up a half step. So the G sharp, you go up to a half step, you get to A. C sharp, go up a half step, get to D. F sharp, go up a half step to get to G, All right? 
And then we also have, again, the F to F sharp. So which seven should you memorize? I have two great methods. Uh, I'll show you which one I do, but there's no wrong way. One is you might memorize the top half of the circle of fifths. So this is all of the major keys that go up to three flats or three sharps. A great way to do this, especially if you were a brass player like me or in concert band, you might've played in B flat a lot growing up. So B flat's really stuck in my head. Uh, or another great way is just memorize all of the keys that are natural, right? So going from F to B, right? So there's all of the keys that have uh, natural as the root of the chord or the root of the key. And with that, this is also then the order of sharps, right? So the F, C, G, D, A, E, B, there's your order of sharps. Or if you're going the counterclockwise around the circle of fifths, there's your B, G, C, F again, your B, E, A, D, G, C, F, right? So again, circle of fifths built from the order of flats and sharps. Before getting into the strategies for our minor keys, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me spread the word so I can keep helping as many people as possible. So then with minor keys, we have a few tricks, right? Because again, there are 15 minor keys to think about, right? And I could guarantee everyone is more comfortable with major keys than they are with minor keys, especially when you get to some of the lower minor keys with like A sharp minor, D sharp minor, and G sharp minor. Those are just, we don't play in those as often and there aren't uh, nice, easy major keys. Like we don't have a G sharp major or D sharp major. Thank goodness, right? Uh, so I have three strategies for minor keys and I'm gonna call this the rule of three when we talk about minor keys um, because the number three is going to pop up quite a lot. So first, when we talk about the circle of fifths itself, one way is to go counterclockwise three. So what I mean by that is that we have the circle of fifths. If we go from A major to A minor, we're going counterclockwise three. So if you're super comfortable with the majors, just rotate it three steps, right? And then from there, you can go A minor is then the same as an A sharp minor with all seven sharps or A flat minor with all seven flats or C major to C minor. We might be super comfortable with that. So then you can go from C minor to C sharp minor. And again, keeping a track, the three flats that we have in C minor are then going to be the three naturals you have in C sharp minor. So this applies to anything as you go around, you're going to go counterclockwise three steps from the major to get to the minor. You might know the term parallel minor. So from B major to B minor, right? They both start with a B, so that means they're parallel. Uh, so, so as you do this, again, you might be more comfortable with G minor with two flats. So when we think about G sharp minor, which isn't a key you might play in as often. So the two flats that you have in G minor are then the two naturals that you have in G sharp minor. Or same thing with D sharp minor. It's kind of a scary key to think about, uh, which again, D minor might be more comfortable with the one flat, right? So that's again, the one natural that you're gonna have in D sharp minor. So another time that number three comes out is thinking about parallel minors in a different way. So I'm gonna add three flats to my keys, right? So if I have C major, so this the major is gonna be the green line, the minor is going to be that purple line. So C major had no sharps or flats, then I add three flats, now you can see the three flats I have. So the B, E, A belonging to C minor, so that means all the four sharps I have left over would belong to C sharp minor. And as I go down the line, right, F major had the one flat where the green is, and I add three flats, now I have four flats total for F minor, right? Which means I have three left over. Again, that rule of seven still popping up, the four flats in F minor versus the three sharps in F sharp minor. And on down the line we go of adding the three flats as we go, right? Then the trick becomes with G minor, right? Because G major had one sharp. So the one sharp plus three flats, so one sharp, one flat cancel out. So you're left with two flats, right? After you've added the three flats to G major, you get two flats for G minor, right? Which means then that rule of seven, you have five sharps left over for G sharp minor. Same kind of thing, D major had two sharps. So the two sharps versus adding the three flats, right? That same kind of thing, that means you're gonna left, be left with one flat now, All right? So lastly is re using the relative minor. So you're gonna go down three half steps. So again, that number three popping up. So C down to A minor, relative minor, they have the same key signature. So they have the same, what I call the same DNA. So that's like C major and A minor, they're relatives since they share the same DNA. All right, so go down three half steps from C major or the note C, go down three half steps to get to the note A, there you have your three half steps from C major to A minor. When you compare them this way, you can see then the sixth scale degree of C major is actually the root, the starting note of A minor, all right? And we can do this with all sorts of chords. So E flat to then C minor. Go down three half steps from E flat to C, right? You would then have this comparison again, seeing the sixth scale degree of E flat major is the starting note of C minor. 
or B major to G sharp minor, right? That's a really common one. Uh, so there's three ways to think about the minor keys that you could have, but again, you really, at the end of the day, only need seven. All right, I hope that's been helpful for you, and don't forget your free music theory survival guide. Again, just go to joshring.com slash free. Again, it has a circle of fits on there, but it has a whole lot more that'll really help you out in your music theory journey. Uh, and below in the comments, please let me know what's been most helpful for you, what strategy is gonna help you the most, and what has been the most eye-opening to you. All right, so thanks again for hanging out with me today. Thanks, and have a great day.